Christina and Lisa. They like chocolate cookies from McDonald's. I was gonna say, what is the thing like? Anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to give them the three pack. Oh. Lisa wasn't here, so I had to eat two of them. So I'm glad that you're eating the last oh. one. Oh. <laughs> First one will help me, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Hi, John. How are you this fine morning? I'm doing wonderful. Cool. I was in the Rocky Mountains to enjoy the Rocky Mountain High. When? Uh, over the weekend. And I stayed in my sister's cabin in Avon, Colorado. You're and only one, there for the weekend? Well, we left on Thursday, got up there on Friday, and then left Sunday afternoon. So the wedding was in Vail. Oh, oh, I bet that was beautiful. But I got to get um very personal personable with a old aspen tree somebody yes. suggested that i take my shoes and socks off go out and lean up against that tree and connect with it mm. okay. and i saw <laughs> when i closed my eyes and connected with the tree after a few moments this is what i saw in front of my eye. I had my eyes closed. That's all I could see was that Keller Williams red. Like no, I didn't that poster connection. in particular. It looked just like that. It was <laughs> everywhere that I could see with my eyes, it was red. You have drank the Kool Aid. Yeah. So <laughs> Not after a bad I thing. was good Kool -Aid. leaning up against the tree for Kool 10 minutes, I came up and she said, Tell me about your experience. And I said, Well, I'm either going to hell or I screwed it up. She's waiting. I said, well, I saw. She said, um, that is the sign of ground, grounding, connecting with the tree, Mother Earth. How often does she do it? Connect with the tree. They, the girls went out here and connected with it again, also. She believes, I mean, she's. I've uh, got a degree in um, natural medicine. But you got to take your shoes off and your socks off. So it was an amazing experience. That's what I know. Was that in Vail or was that in the town? That was in Avon, in? up along. My sister built their cabin on Daybreak Ridge. And I can see why they call it that because when the sun comes up, if you're lucky enough to be up before the sun and watch it come up, it is amazing. I got a okay. picture of it right before the rays came down. I got them when they were going up. Because once the rays come through, the game to hit. Get the blur on your camera. So does she live there full time or just goes there from time to time? She lives in Denver. She's from Cloquet, Minnesota. Born and raised. But she lives in Denver. She does her business out there. So there's family out there. We had a great time. Wow. Short time, but it was live it to its fullest. Don't sit around and wait. And that's an all together different class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, how are we doing as, for as time? As my sister calls it, she says, get on, on the bus. bus. <laughs> exactly, get on the bus. She says, get on the bus. Whenever you have an opportunity, Get on the bus. So now this is um, good to start. Oh, these are realtors. <laughs> I forget. I'm a builder. Yes, we are this, realtors. I came into this business as a as a I'm a home builder. I'm a German carpenter by trade. Really? So I thought I better get another. <laughs> so I'll give you 10 minutes on a continued ed class. If you're 10 minutes late, you get credit. If you're 11 minutes late, I'm sorry. You may be unteachable. Do <laughs> we get credit? Not today. I did not apply for this for continued ed class, but it needs to be taught. Absolutely. So I'm just trying to overcome my fear of being in front of people. You really have a fear of it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time right. believing that. 
<laughs> I'll give you a little introduction. And we're going to start it right now. If you guys have been good enough to be here on time, so I'm not going to sit and wait for everybody else. Thank you. Okay. My fear of being in front of people when I was six years old, they used to have Christmas parties out in the rural Minnesota. I was born and raised in West Concord on a farm next to the Zumbro River. Um, at the Christmas party, they says, we need some entertainment. Does anybody know any Christmas carols? And of course, my mother says, my son John knows how to sing. <laughs> and he would love to get up on the stage <laughs> and stand there and sing <laughs> Silent Night. And, by yourself? <laughs> yes. By myself. Wow. And you know what else my mother always told me? Get your hands out of your pockets. Don't stand up there with your hands in your pockets. Now, she didn't tell me that when I got up on the stage, but my first reaction was my fear of being in front of people. Put your hands in your pocket for whatever reason. Yeah, it's not weird. Okay? <laughs> and I'm sitting up there like, I stand up there and I'm like, okay, I'm thinking of the songs first. I know them all. And the first thought was, don't put your hands in your pocket. <laughs> you know what happens when you plant that in your brain? Your hands keep wanting to go in your pocket. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sure I'm just <laughs> this. I've learned today, I don't have to put my hands in my pocket. We're all here to learn. And I accepted a long time, a while back, that we're all teachers, that I'm a teacher. I can't keep my knowledge to myself. What I've learned on this journey in real estate, I can't keep it to myself. I've built about 300 houses in the last 40 years. I'm a journeyman carpenter. I am a licensed real estate broker since 1992. And I'm going to reactivate my contractor's license again. Because I sit in front of people and they want to build. I've got an appointment tonight. And, you know, it's hard to watch somebody else build what you know how to do. Mm -hmm. And I know how to build super efficient. So that's my background. I came to Cal Williams. I had my own real estate company. For years I had agents working for me as a broker. I decided to join this group. Because, and we're glad you did. Because of the fact that it, it's a family environment and I don't, I get sick. It gets old babysitting, adult daycares. So don't ever fall into that group. Lead. As agents, lead. Okay? You're leaders because you're here today to listen to what I have to share about wells and septics. Okay? So now you know a little bit about me. I, as a builder, I contracted to build houses. I was, um, my background is I built houses from the ground up. So I hired septic installers excavators to do my septic systems for my clients. I also had hired people to drill wells, put those into my, on the properties where I was building the house or a shared well. I've done all of those. And um, so it's very important after going through that whole process of having a well installer install a brand new well, I said, Paul, what's the criteria? He said, well, I got to do a well test after we drill the hole in the ground. And he said, and then you can submit it to your mortgage company so you can get your construction loan and everything else because you got to have good water. So with that said, you have to have a good septic system. So I hired good people to do my septics. I use a couple of the same, probably three or four people. I interview them. So I've got, if you ever need names, I got names to give you in all the different counties. We have a gentleman from, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. Bruce Beckley from One Owner. Jody Helm. Caleb Gilletta from here. Uh, Joe Clark. Lori Mitnick. Very good. So I've done business in many counties in Minnesota. So if you need people, um, contact person to do work or to go through the process, you're welcome to text me or call me, okay? And um, 
So I'll be glad to help. And at least get you going in the right direction. Okay, so now we come down to the well business. In order for a buyer to get a mortgage, they need to get a satisfactory well test. I printed out some documents. You, you, you would pass those out, I'd appreciate it. And there's multiple pages in here. So the first page is a satisfactory well test. Okay? It is it passes. And now I finally figured out they have red lights and green lights. If you look at these are colored for reasons. <laughs> The green is go, it's good, okay? So now, there's a back page, that's just signature page. The page with all the printing, the meaning of water test results, I attached this here so you have it. You can get a lot of this from the different counties, okay? If you go far enough. So at least you know what's gotta be done. Because we represent buyers, we represent sellers, so we need to know. It says on our Keller Williams forums, we're not experts, okay? We're not lawyers, we're not tax advisors and things like that. But we also represent people. So we need to be knowledgeable and we call ourselves a team of business cards that says I'm a real estate professional, okay? Professional means you need to have a decent understanding and you need to know who to refer to if you're going to have something, you know, like a septic installed or well drilled or a well test done. The county, Dodge County, they'll come out and do it for anything. It's 115 bucks. Dean Schramm will come out and do the well test. Okay. This back of this page, it is page four. It looks like this. Um, the homeowners had the county come out and do a well test. There's only two people in the house and they had been in and out of there for quite a while so the well had not been getting much use. And I talked to them about shocking the well and they chose not to. So they hired Dean to come out and do the test and it came back, let's see, see this one? When I told you green is go and red is stop, this has got red on here. I think they used to print this out in black and white and people would miss it. So now they make it obvious. So this came back with um, chloride, fluor uh, no, high nitrates and E. coli, uh, one county and then it's, it exceeds the limit and coliform bacteria. That's what the two reds are on the bottom. High nitrites, nitrates, 11.2. It says the standard is 0.25 parts per liter. This one is 11.2, 0.25. This one is 11.2. There is nothing you can do to eliminate. I call the well guy. One that I know. I said, what is the solution? The nitrate test came at 11.2. Now he's in the well business, okay? He says, drill a new well. I said, my seller is not spending $20,000 to drill a new well. If we, I've used his family's business for years, so I talk to him all the same. And he said, oh, well, that's just one of That's my option, because I'm in the well business, okay? So this one, um, the homeowners decided because all these bottom ones were red, bleach their well. They ended up bleaching it three times on a weekend. How do you do that? It's a quarter of a gallon of bleach. They can do it themselves? Please, do not advise them to do it themselves. Um, but they did, and we got way too much bleach in the well. 
way too much bleach in the well. Okay? Um, I'm going to have you go to this page. This is called Simplified, Simplified Bleaching Procedure. Does everybody see that page? Okay? If they would have had this, it would have saved us a lot of pain and agony. Because it says in here, use vinegar after you pour the bleach on. Because vinegar will change the pH of the water. Now, I might teach you all the technology, but it is here. If they would have had this, it would have saved a lot of pain and saved them a lot of water. They were concerned they were going to burn the well out, the pump out, because they ran. Deb, my apologies. <laughs> this is my first experience in getting struck. You're doing good. People, so. <laughs> anyway, that would have saved a lot of pain and agony. After we finally got all the bleach out of the water, we still had a red light. That was the well, the nitrate, the nitrate was down to 11.1. So it only dropped one little point, a tenth of a point. Okay, the next sheet that I have on here is a bunch of the well drillers, the people that service wells. Okay, that comes in to be very handy because trying to search these people out is painful sometimes. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a picture. I did not make copies of this one. This is a little tube, a <laughs> test tube that comes with a well test kit. You fill it up with a half inch at the top, and that's what you put in the box to take down to the health department to drop it off. This is supposed to be clear when you take the sample. Now, what I learned is after the first test failed, because it evidently turned this color at Alsea County Health Department, because he sent me a, a message. It said, the chlorine level's off the chart. So they went back to Dodge County, got another test kit, and Dean says, oh, by the way, we have these little tablets, a five pack, a blister pack, and you can drop it in the test tube, and if it turns pink at the house, don't take it to Olmsted County and pay for another well test. This was in the kitchen of their house after I took I took the sample in the kitchen, but you got to take it out the outside faucet. You got to use a blowtorch and don't melt the vinyl siding, please. A don't set, You have to sanitize. They give you a, there's some um, alcohol wipes in there, but there could be bacteria on the outside faucet. If somebody had a hose on there, and they usually do it to drain it, to run it for six hours, eight hours to get the chlorine out of the well. And uh, I dropped a tablet in there for demonstration purposes only and it went this color just that quick and this has been running for eight hours the water in the well so we still had to run it more so we get satisfactory well test it came back after three or four days we finally got a satisfactory well test that little red line that i showed you the nitrates 11.2, 11.1 was still too high. The well guy's only solution was a $20,000 well. Okay? <clears throat> this is, if it's not in your pack, I apologize. And if you'd like a copy of it, um, <laughs> take your copy of it. You need my other copy of it. Uh, 27 years ago, or whatever, 30 years ago, I ran into one out east of Cassin. There was an old creamery. It came out at 11, or it came out, whatever the nitrate, I think it was 18. And um, I'd heard a horror story from for sale by owner, what happened to my sister-in-law married. He's not my brother-in-law, but she's my sister-in-law. He's the second part of the video. And they were going to save money, so they hired, called the well guy. What's the solution? Drill a new well. 
I said, how did that work? Mick says, they drilled down through my existing well, which was 100 feet deep. They drilled down to 300 and because the area out by casting was 320 feet, 310, something like that. Tested it again, nitrates, nitrates, too high. I think they drilled not quite to that molten rock. I think it was 600 feet deep to get away from it. I didn't dare ask him how much the well cost. Mm -hmm. He was selling his acreage to a buyer and a buyer from the mortgage. Okay, so this is why people need realtors that know what they're talking about. We're not experts. This is just what I need. You can get a document and share this stuff. The solution to the high nitrates was hanging on a wall at Culligan. 27 years ago, we put one of these in. It's called the reverse osmosis system underneath the kitchen sink. All they need is clean drinking water to drink to make coffee and to brush your teeth. You can take a bath in high nitrates and it won't hurt you. What I also learned this time around is there, I heard stories of a blue baby syn syndrome. It's caused from drinking high nitrate water. Little kids, they can't, they, it, it screws up the way the lungs convert oxygen and put it in the bloodstream. So the babies are basically starving for oxygen. They end up coming blue. Okay? That's what nitrates do to little kids. They tell me it doesn't affect adults over 18, whatever. Once you get to be an adult, your body's functioning well, it doesn't affect you. But this is a solution. $1,800. We had to change the purchase agreement so the lender could be satisfied, but they kept demanding another well test. And uh, I gave them the documents for all of this. And they're like, okay, no problem. So, any questions regarding wells? So, the lender was satisfied just by installing this equipment mm -hmm. to repair it? So it doesn't have to necessarily pass the test. We couldn't get the well to pass okay. the test. Okay. There's no way. Without drilling a new well, there's no guarantee to get around it. Okay? And I hate to take, I would hate to be a seller and spend 20 grand to find out I still got high nitrates. And oh, by the way, you're my real estate professional. What do you know about this stuff? What didn't you have to have it tested again after you installed that system? I sent them the reports, but they didn't require another well test. I sent them the report right. from Culligan. Then it would have been it's reverse osmosis water. They passed it through. So we had to do that. We had to get another test after it was installed. Do they test the sink water or the well water? Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. This was, what was the lender? Was it Wells Fargo? They were okay with it. Huh. Going back to this bleach thing. Yeah. Is the bleach what got rid of the E. coli and the coliform? Yes. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. I'm glad you asked that question. How well it sits, it's got a uh, steel or cast iron jacketed pump, submersible pump that's down in the water. It will generate, as if rust will be, is a bacteria. So if you have rusty water, uh, the pipes can generate their own bacteria. So it sits for a long time, now run a lot of water. By all means, bleach it. It's shocking, it kills the bacteria. We had one out by West Concord this spring, and they shocked that well four times. Rick's Well and Pump Service is out there four times because it had an old dairy barn, and there was a dead end hydrant, and it had a tube going, a line going out to it, but the hydrant broke, so they just dead ended it. 
and they had a nightmare. If they could run bleach through it, they would have been done the first time. And they had just a hard time with that one. They finally got done and passed with flying colors. And I think that was probably, um, was that, no, that wasn't the first one. I've done many of these. Okay, the next one, any other questions on wells? Jim? I want to comment. Yeah. Uh, don't do your shocking yourself. Call <laughs> somebody that haven't, haven't done them professionally. I had one up by Byron who had tested. Uh, they provided a well test to sellers, mm. and it was the same as city water. Yep. Guess what? We had it tested, it was way off the charts and everything mm -hmm. bad. So they said that they shocked it. And they sent us back another report, the same freaking report. And then we went out, I did it, went out and tested it again, same off the chart thing. So we told them you have to have a professional do it, otherwise we're not gonna take care you of it. You bring up a great point. And I'm, Jim was the broker here prior to Tim becoming a broker. And I'm gonna tell you, my suggestion is right on there that the well test be done by a professional, okay? Even though, and I mean a professional well person, you can even write on there who you would prefer to have do it, but not, they bring Jim from Timbuk 4 over by Albert Lee, I don't have a clue who it is. The people that I use, I know who they are. I've had agents and sellers get upset with me. Why did you request this person? Because I'm, representing the buyer. Somehow we have a contract. It's required to have a contract to represent them. They have a bunch of things on there we're supposed to do and know how to do. So that's the deal. But right on there, it's done by a professional. Because if you have Dodge County go out and do it, and nobody's bleached the well, and the other part is sellers agree to make all necessary repairs, make sure that it's safe drinking water at their expense. That's a different class, but that's what I do. How are we doing for time? Very good. Everybody's favorite topic. Now, here's what I've learned. <laughs> if I have a problem with my septic system, do you know when it's going to happen? <laughs> No, Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas, Easter, typically after dinner, okay? So with that said, um, you gotta make sure the septic system is in compliance, that it's working. I'm gonna cover a few septic systems today, the different ones that can be installed, and then I'm gonna have somebody um, do a testimonial on one of them because she has great experience in it just recently. Okay, so here is um, we'll take one of these, pass them around. You always have your sellers do check compliance uh -huh. before they put it on the market. That would be ideal okay. because it eliminated a lot of yabats. How's the test? Yeah, but I've had lots of things to do. Family showed up and all. Yeah, but I will get it done. Yeah, but I will get it done. Okay. Um, ideal situation is get get it a compliance certificate taken care of. It doesn't have to be done like every couple of years or. You're talking I guess about. Just when you change ownership. Yes. Most most of the counties that I know of. Um, I think Winona County is, I think they're all the same. That on transfer title, I think it has to be in compliance. Does it? Yeah. Most, I, the ones that I deal in, I think all of them require. Um, the state changed the rules about 2008 and uh, on the separation of soils. Key point. The ones that we had installed in 2008 um, were up to code. The ones we put in in 1976 were put in up to code. Ken Bangus put one in off 
east of the golf course in Manorville. Deb's familiar with the territory out there with the Dead End Road. Kenny Bangus was great installer of septic systems. I always went to the people that did an excellent job. That was in compliance, 1976. I can still see the houses they put them on. Okay? They were up to code at that time. So the EP, the Pollution Control Agency, they must have got some good training in college. But then they came out in 92 and said they need to change code. If you got it in by August 1st, September 1st it was going to change. Separation and how they were installed and things like that. And uh, I had one in Manorville that was installed in August of 92. And that one passed here just a few years ago. Five, six years ago. It passed the compliance inspection for that separation. I know who put the the same guy that put mine in out there in 92, put that one in. Benj knew what he was doing. Good operator. He knew what he was doing and it passed. I was, I was shocked that it would pass. I knew he did the install, but I figured somewhere along the line, something may not lie. So that is one that's in compliance. Here's another one. And this one was um, here. This one's in the city limits of Rochester, Minnesota. The one you just got. Mr. Huff Schulte did the compliance inspection. It's all for the old Claymore ballroom. They have to get us a, um, a license and they have to have it one check, I think, every two years. There's a few of them in town that are in the city limits, but they don't have any sewer lines running to the house. Colored pictures have great impact. This one was installed in 2008. Remember I told you about the code changing? Minnesota passed a mandate Every county in the state of Minnesota is going to go by this guideline for soil separation. For mottled soil. Okay. This one was installed in 2008. I had Mr. Huff Schulte get out and check it. And it didn't. Darren says there's a little strip about three quarters of an inch wide, 18 to 24 inches down. And he said, I can't pass it. So it's not in compliance. My client paid $11,000 for a five bedroom septic system. For $11,000, they got a three bedroom septic system. I know who installed it. They had a problem down there. Um, most of the guys come out and they probe down in the soils, four feet deep, with a hydraulic probe, or they use a rod, God bless you. Bless you. And uh, they bring a soil sample four feet deep, and they peel it out on a tube so they can see what the soil colors are. If you've never watched it, go watch it. Um, and I'll pull some uh, videos up so you can at least see it. So if you want it later, I'll forward it to you. This one did pass, did not pass. My sellers were shocked. They had a three um, three bedroom house on the main floor, and they were finishing off two bedrooms downstairs. They told the installer they wanted a five bedroom septic system. They did not get it. They didn't know. They were their own general contractor. They put in a, their own modular home. They did not know. They were a referral from clients of mine. It was his mom and dad. So I had to be the bearer of bad news. Let's see. This one has got, this one has all the design, the soils. I included everything with it to upgrade the system. Uh, how, long, how long does it take to? install a septic system or 
um, get a new well? How long could that? It depends on how busy the subcontractors are, how busy the installers are. I called for a septic um, quote over by uh, ground sale, and the people that I called, they said there's no way we can get it done this year. Oh. Because we had so much rain early on that they just started installing them maybe a month ago. The ground got firm enough, dry enough, so they could install them. Okay? And the first one that one of my installers installed was over between Dodge Center and Wisconsin. Uh, so they probably couldn't close that. We closed on escrow because the sale was closed in, um, I think, the first of May or end of April. It was a cash transaction, so we did an escrow one and a quarter times. And uh, so that one's installed, fully operational, and it's in, it's just an interesting journey. So this one, um, I'm going to go just a little further into this detail. The quote that was on here included a hoot system, like a hoot owl, mm -hmm. H-O-O-T, okay? Weezer Weiser Concrete out of Stewartville along Highway 63 is a vendor for them. What I want you to make sure of is when you get a quote for a septic system, if you're the listing agent or you're representing the buyer and the septic is bad, make sure that it includes a finished grade and the electrical to the pump for the lift pump on either a, a mound system or a hood system. Because there's a pump in there and most of them don't include, some of them don't. Now mine, anyone I get, they're already, I sent out a, an email to all of them. If you don't include that on there, you are not gonna get the bid. Okay, so that's the deal with this one. This system, I had the house listed at 224.9 because it was less than a 10 year old system. Some counties, it was, um, they consider it to be a failed system if it's over 10 years old. Now, when they tell you they install them, they're good to 30 or 40 years old. If you take good care of them, they will last for a long time. So why do the people that make you get the permit now assume that if they're over 10 years old, they might not be in compliance? Just things to think about, okay? So this system is all done. It's a hoot system. The house was right on the edge of a, it had hills, a steep hill in the back. They moved the house clear down to the east side of the property because it was easier to get in and get out of. They didn't have any space. Mr. Hofschultz, he said, I'm not putting a mound system in. For 25 grand for a mound, I am not putting it on the hillside because it will wash away. And I'm a firm believer in a hoot system because what I've been told, a lot but out of Winona, it was called a multi-flow years ago. I've seen them many, many years ago before I had my real estate license. They made perfect sense because you get you use two-thirds less grain field. So on that particular application, that was the best and the only one that would really work. Let's see where I'm at. Okay. So now this one. Uh, the hoot system was installed, and along with that, there is a $600 fee. Is there a $600 fee? And have it checked over? Yeah. Okay. Here's the deal it's um, go for septic, checks them on Rochester, Cardinal, I think Larry checks them down there, and I've used his services, so. Um, but anyway, um, it's a $600 fee. I think it might be 300 a year, but they come out and check it. So it's like two years, $300 a year to have them check it. It's got, it blows air into the septic tank. It feeds those little microorganisms. The difference between the septic systems is 
anaerobic and aerobic. Anaerobic is your standard septic system, means lack of air. Okay? You've ever seen them, you've seen the risers, there's no vent tube down into the septic system. Okay? So it's anaerobic. I envision those little microorganisms on there. I need air. They need air. Okay? The aerobic system is the hoot system. They blow air and oxygen into the tank. They can breathe again and do what they're hired to do. Okay? They clean, they clean up the septic, they clean up your drain field. Because those oxygenated microorganisms go out into the drain field and they continue to eat that. You might hear the word biomass. B-I-O-M-A-S-S. If you get too much biomass, it means Thanksgiving about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, people are using your restroom and they, somebody comes out and says, oh my God, you know the words they say? It won't go down. <laughs> so, my visuals aren't the best, but there's something you will remember. Yeah. And uh, so, and then they come out, they pump your tank, so at least you can get by with that. If you can get a hold of somebody on Thanksgiving or Easter, you know, and um, but those little living and breathing microorganisms will clean up your drain field. They will clean up. If you have a plugged up system, within two weeks, they will clean up your drain field so it, it can drain again. I had one that was plugged up, and Mr. Leth came out, and I'm like, Jeffrey, what have you got? He had a five-gallon pail, and I wasn't sure it was atrazine spray chemicals. So he took the cover off it, and oh my God, it was like being out by somebody's. Pit. I'm like, oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it had the foulest smell. And it was brown and it was liquid. And I said, what is that? Five gallons of bacteria. Now, this was an anaerobic system. So, five gallons of fresh bacteria, fresh, right out of the factory. Wherever they raise them, he had it. 165 bucks, he poured it down their riser into the septic tank. I said, so what is this gonna do? He said, those little bacteria will clean that whole drain field up. I'm like, right. I, I'm a little bit skeptic by nature, which I'm, I've heard that's okay. Two weeks. 10 days, it was, it was no longer sluggish. How he checked it, he came out and pumped the tank, and then came back and pumped water in the tank, rebuilt the tank up. So over the little tubes that go out, the inlet and the outlet, and he was watching it. I said, what are you looking for? He says, well, I'm just watching it. Now watch to see how much water disappears in 10 minutes. It went down, and I could see the top of the outlet. Now they have video cameras. Snakes, you can shine over there and check all this stuff out. So it's a great learning experience. So with that said, for 165 bucks for five gallons of that, I tried to buy some, because it's hard to find. So then I was sitting there Thanksgiving, and watching a football game, and this, it was out in Boston, Massachusetts, and it was Jake the excavator, and he was digging somebody's front yard up, and it was a Ridex commercial. You can pay me now, or use Ridex, to keep your drain field and your septic working. 
eight bucks for one of them. You can buy it liquid or powder, flush down your toilet. You know, I've spent eight dollars worse than that. So I bought a three pack every 90 days, flushing down your toilet. My personal residence, I can experiment with my personal residence. So I'm telling you my personal story. Mr. Leth came out to pump my septic system and it was two years, two and a half years into it. And he says, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? What am I doing? He said, well, you had a hard day slug in your tank. So you know what that told me? I told him, I said, you know that deal when you dumped that five gallons of bacteria in that septic many, many years ago? I was paying attention. So I experimented with my own property before I make any suggestions. And it's by you telling me I have hardly any sludge in my tank, tells me that this stuff works. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or you're not full of it. Pardon me? Or you're not full of <laughs> So, it works. So if you want to keep your septic in good condition, look, you can YouTube it today. They have so many things on YouTube, it's insane. Give it as a closing gift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, here's what I'm going to give you an assignment. Write this down. Septic Genie. G-E-N-I-A. Septic Genie YouTube. Knowledge is powerful. Olmstead County was passing this ordinance on septic separation because they wanted to be more restrictive than the state of Minnesota. Because we are special. Olmstead County is a special county. <laughs> they have karst soil and we want to protect our water. Rightly so. So they invited me out to the uh, Byron Fire Hall. Don Van Coolen used to design my septics. He got hired by Olmstead County as a septic inspector. <laughs> 200 people are sitting in the fire hall. I had my little septic genie notebook. And I also asked him, I said, Don, Matt Flynn is the county chairman. chairman. He said, John, looks like you have a question. I couldn't find a chair, so I was standing up. And uh, I said, well, I have one question. Matt, does Olmstead County accept uh, an aerobic septic install? He looked at me really funny, like, what did I just say? He didn't know what it was. He said, I will direct that to the most knowledgeable mm -hmm. guy in the room on septics. Mr. Van Coolen, can you answer Mr. Buckingham's question? <laughs> and I said, Don, you need me to repeat it? I said, my question is to the whole crowd. I want to make sure everybody heard it because they're all taxpayers. Okay? I said, Don, does Olmstead County allow anaerobic systems or aerobic? Do you allow aerobic systems? And then um, Mr. Conley said, Mr. Buckingham, can you explain the difference? I said, and just what I told you, anaerobic is lack of oxygen, aerobic is oxygenated. Yes, it's allowed. Try to get it in Dodge County. Try to get a hoot system in Dodge County. The lady that's in charge used to be a horse whisperer. I thought she was a dog groomer. She was the only one to fill out an application for the job. And you can ask that question. That's bad. Okay. She will not allow a hoot system. I talked to Mr. Gam, and he's her boss, and he they didn't know enough about it. So I if our elected or appointed officials in the health department and stuff don't know enough about it, we got a problem. Because if we counsel, give people the right information, 
our sellers and buyers will make an informed decision. Because the last thing we want to do is five years from now, we just sold them a house, five years from now they go to sell it, and they put a system in and they have no more room to put a septic system in. Because we have postage stamp sites that were put in 40 years ago, 35 years ago, Deb knows where they are, Leprechaun Lane, is there any other streets out there? Mark something? Okay, they're one acre, three quarter acre lots. They got a septic system on them, good for 40 years. You know, I just, now that I think about that, a house should last for hundreds of years, okay? If you got a septic system that 40 years, it's not gonna, what are you gonna do with it 40 years from now? What are you gonna use, do when they change the ordinance? That it has to be a certified in compliance. You have no more room for the septic system. In. What do you do? Dodge County solution is go see the neighbor. Buy a chunk of ground. The farmer's got 160 acres all around you. He'll sell you a piece of land. There's a gentleman that works at the bank in West Carver. You can ask him how much it costs him to buy that little strip of land from the neighbor next door. They didn't quite get along so much. I think he paid ten thousand dollars for a strip of land as wide as this room and twice as long. Put a grain field on it, and the farmer said, "Why should I sell it to you?" He said, "Well, we've got to, so I can buy this piece of property." He said, "I farm with sixty-foot wide machinery." Four wheel drive tractors. Do you know how painful it is for me to try to drive that equipment around that little rectangle? At a corn plant, and the plant's 24 rows at a time. It's painful. So I, I know I grew up on a farm. I understand their situation. They do not want to sell you a piece of land. So, with that said, <clears throat> we have a real concern. So, somebody puts a septic system in, you sell them a one acre lot. They put the septic se second septic system in. They have no more room. So 10 years from now, or 12 years from now, they call you, we're gonna sell our property. For some reason, it's not in compliance. What are they going to do? If they put a hoot system in, they're treated like a sewage treatment plant. Mr. O'Laughlin told me that many, many years ago. I had him install one in Homer, Minnesota. And he he said this, they've been using multiple multi-core for years down there because he uses a smaller grain field. And the effluent, that's the water that comes out of the septic tank, is cleaner. They said it's almost like drinking water. Now I haven't drank it. But it's clear. So remember the hoot system. And I think if I don't have it all here. <clears throat> so they can't install the hoot system at that point? Repeat the question. When you said that what are they going to do because they don't have a place to install one because the typically the drain a... field if they come up with a mound system it's pretty good size but if it's a four bedroom house it's going to be it'll be this high and it needs to have a pitch on it because they got to look, unload all that sand in there so it's typically about as wide as this room and about twice as long for a four bedroom house so or what closer. do they do if they, if they have a little that. bitty space, you can put the, the hoot tank in and get by with like two thirds less drain field. And I've been told that it's like a sewage treatment plant. It's a one time deal. Because you have change filters, oxygenates everything, so it makes for a great system. They may come up with more. When you look up septic genie, You're going to get frustrated because that little 
binder that I had. The, the uh, CMAR, our CMAR group was out there at that meeting at Byron. And Karen says, what do you got in this three ring binder? I said, well, this is about a septic alternative. Where'd you get this? I said, YouTube. I got it on the internet. Everything's true on the internet, isn't it? Of course it is, okay. especially on YouTube. <laughs> and then I opened it up to the last page, and there was a state stamp on it of Massachusetts. I don't have it on here. I think I, I've got it somewhere. I will show it to you. I said, she said, what's this? And Matt Flynn was looking at it. And I says, well, that's a state stamp. What state? I said, Massachusetts. I said, there's a signature on here. The governor of Massachusetts. What's his name? Can you read it out loud? Everybody knows that person. His name was Mitt Romney. Did he run for president? Mm -hmm. I said, now, here's what I know. This is the whole complete set or septic gene, and it's approved in the state of Massachusetts because they have postage stamp lots. They call them country estates. I was visiting there and I said, I gotta get to the country. I gotta get out and see some land. <laughs> and they drove me out to country estate that's this is bourbon Rochester. I said where do you have to go to see land? Oh, the Anirondacks. You got to get out in the open territory. Everything's close there. But do your homework. YouTube, Septic Genie. Do a little more detailed information. You will be ahead of the rest of the herd, your competition. Okay? This just quotes on septics. This one is in regards to um, a mound system over by Brownsdale. You'll see all that stuff, and if you guys want some of this stuff later, you're welcome to come and get some of it. Um, let's see. This is the one I installed, had installed down by Spring Valley, County Road 1. I was told by the listing agent the sellers had got a quote for replacing the septic system because the septic was installed in 1981 when they built the house. Slab on grade. Little four or five acre grand. They had a pretty spot for a, uh, for a house, face the sun, so sunshine on the floor. 20 grand for a septic system. I said, well, I just need to see the quote. And then they told me who they got. I said, who'd you get it from? And I said, well, I'm sorry, but that gentleman is not installing the septic system if my clients buy this house. And the agent said, why? I said, I beg you, give me a quote, because my client, the buyer client from my house in Preston, the one that had the nine-year-old septic system, he wanted him to install it. I couldn't get a quote out of it. His secretary said, well, Mr. Buckingham, he hasn't called me back yet. This is the fourth time I said, no, I'm sorry. I said, tell him he doesn't have to keep my number. So when his name came up, I'm like, you're not installing this one. But I was also told by the designer that it required a mound system. Had a beautiful slab on grade. Remember the word? Slab on grade, low to the ground. Beautiful wide open backyard with a beautiful view. And the place that they told me that mound system was going to go was going to be four feet high, 20 feet from the house. There goes your view. So I said, no. So I wrote on the request, Darren Huckshow people will install the septic. They told me their bid was 20 grand. I had to drag it out of them. If you look at the numbers on this one, this is an at grade trench system, $11,850. The seller still got a little upset because there were some miscellaneous things that weren't included in Mr. Huff Schulte's bid, and that was the electrical to hook it up and the finished grading. And the finish rating was about 1100 bucks. And um, Josh did a beautiful job. And Seabright was having a little bit of a challenge with the electrical. We finally figured it out.
Okay, I'm going to pass this one out. This is the prettiest disclosure on a septic system I've ever seen. <laughs> the seller said I can fill that out because I they have to fill it out anyway. <laughs> he works for a landscaping company, so I can, this was in such detail. I emailed it to my installer, and he says, "Oh my god!" Especially this. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and they were so accurate. And I sold them this property 22 years ago, prior to that. And they didn't. They, you know, the compliance inspection back then was if the toilet flushes. It's in compliance, okay? And I attached to this um, two different quotes that I got on the system. And uh, Hans and Moore ended up putting it in, and Dennis did a really nice job. He just got it done not very long ago. So you got some information for educational purposes. So is there an average price? For a septic? The lady at Dodge County believes the holdback automatically needs to be $22,000 for the second. Okay, so I'm going to say you've been informed. Okay, this is one that's um, less than five years old. I'll let you pass this one around. We just closed on that one not too long ago. And Dodge County believes that it's less than five years old. If you got proof of the permit and things like that, it's in compliance. And the lender accepted that. This one is on a commercial property that will be installed. Let's see. Let's see. They're going to allow them to put a holding, a holding tank in because it's a manufacturing facility. So there's um, not a whole lot that goes with that one. This one I'm just going to hold. I'm not going to pass that one out. Here's septic installers. No. See this? It, if you can't see the word, these are septic system professionals. So you think you got somebody who really knows what they're doing because it says the word professional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Last but not least, I just got one minute left. This is a document on the hoot system that I had not planned on printing out. Two pages of each one of these. So there's two pages to this. So take the top one and the second one behind it and pass it on. <coughs> and I told you I would have a testimonial for you today in regards to somebody that's in our midst that has some experience with septic systems. Jody, could you speak about the boot system? Oh, wait, could you speak about your adventure just a little bit? Sure. Um, Here, come up to the front okay. of the room. <laughs> I, I have to start that. training people to right. speak in front of a crowd. Thanks, John. All right. So my husband and I moved here in October about from Texas and purchased a home here. We decided this is going to be the last one. We wanted to find exactly what we wanted, and it needed a new septic system. So we wanted to make sure that we had everything covered. We did not want any headaches come spring. We didn't want to have to deal with it, just have it all taken care of. However, we did not have enough money come spring to pay for our electrical tree removal. Had no idea about the different types of systems as far as pre-treatment or mound, the price differences between the two, but we knew we didn't want a big hump in our front yard. However, the only estimate that was presented to us was the cheaper of the two, which is the mound system, when we closed. Um, I had to end up calling everybody as the buyer. Um, I just kind of hope now being a realtor on this side to be more of a voice for people. And um, I hope that you guys are too. Go to bat for your buyers. Contact the septic system. If you don't have a quote that includes everything, get one. Um, whether you have to have a separate one that includes the electrical, tree removal, whatever they need. Um, what else? Um, 
know what their different options are, know that there's the process of having a design. We wanted to get a different quote after we knew the first one didn't have everything that we needed and say, here's what we have in escrow. Can you do this for us? We went to a different company. And they said, we can't do that unless we have a design. Well, my first company said, there's only one person around here that does designs. It's locked up if you'd like to buy it for like, I don't know if it was like $2,200, you can. And then we could go to somebody else. So we ended up staying where we were. Um, just to make sure you hold enough funds in their escrow account, you know, have everything covered. Um, what else? Kind of know an idea of the process, I guess. We didn't know anything about like compacting the dirt, possibly running water beforehand to get the grounds prepared ahead of time. So we didn't do any of that. We figured our realtor and the septic company knows everything. They'll just do it all, no problems. We get it all put in and a couple days later after it's ring, we have a huge hole in our yard. We know nothing about settling. We think we have this big sinkhole or a kid or a dog can fall in there because we didn't know how to prepare everything ahead of time and we weren't warned about what happens after and what to do beforehand. So um, just kind of an idea of how that system goes from start to end. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. But we, we ended up finding our own electrician, having to come more out of pocket. I ended up calling everybody and my realtor that I had didn't do anything for me. So. Yeah, it wasn't a great experience, but we're all together now. So, and I have the boot system. So, <laughs> she didn't have to go through this again. When she gets ready to sell, she is on home plate. Yeah. Okay. Well, are they always <laughs> are they always doing the boot, boot system now? No. Because they're more expensive. Uh, no. <laughs> Okay. The one that I showed you in Spring Valley, the quote was 25 grand for a five bedroom mound system. And it was $220,000 for a hoot system. Yeah, they're really not. I mean, the differences would have been, we could either pay to have trees removed, which would have been a couple thousand dollars per tree, and then have a big mound in our yard, or pay the same and have a flat yard and a pre-treatment system. So, and the pre-treat is, maybe $300 a year for the first two years. Yeah. And Pat um, um, Pat Loomis at Gopher said, they just, they want to establish a little history with that system. That's why they have that inspection for the first couple of years. And then they'll know how often they need to come back. Okay. But we figured it's 30 bucks a month, every month to cover your maintenance of a hoot system. Okay, the other one's free for the time being because you don't have that $30 a month deal for a mound system. But if you run out of room and you get ready, you get a job transfer. We plan on staying here forever. You get a job offer somewhere, three years down the road and you need to sell your house and they come out and it will not, the mound is not in compliance. Darren just told me about one that's less than 10 years old and the mound system has failed. I'm like, they spent $25,000. Thanks, Jody. I appreciate it. Now, we're done. Thank you all for coming today. Thank Do you, you have any questions? Jim. Uh, we've got this place up in my own road. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the neighbors came over, and well, my seller swears that his system's the best. He doesn't have a compliance report. He told me he would get one. He says, well, I'm not going to pay for one of them when I know it's in compliance. Then. Well, your expires aren't going to go. Anyway, long story short, the neighbor came over. He's been buying properties around this house. He said, you know where they're going to put a, a mound system in. I said, no, I didn't know that. He said that Olmston County requires these, you know, in-ground systems be replaced with mounds. I never heard that. No. You talked to Van, Don Van Coolen or Chad Knudsen. I know both of them very well. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little um, tidbit. The lady that they hired at Rice County, Minnesota to do the septic inspections, she demanded everybody put a, they bring in a, a design, not by the amount system.
That'd be in my own system. I'm driving over to Morristown one day and down Highway 60, and I see this grove of oak trees on the south side of the road on a hillside. And they got a mound system out here. I'm like, this is insane. Should not be a mound system here. Okay? Now, a bunch of people finally got together at some kind of family reunion or school function, and they all started talking about, they put a new septic in. What you put in? Mound system. That's the only thing that you allow to do. Well, that's funny. That's what my installer told me. The only thing she would allow, the inspector would allow us to do was a mound system. That's funny. It went around the room. They started a class action lawsuit. I don't think that lady's working there anymore. And I don't know what Race County did to settle that. She thought they were the best. And like this one down in Spring Valley where the designer who I wouldn't use, said it had to be a mound system. And Griffin came out there and did the design G cube out of Chatfield. I know Chris very well. Chris says, yeah, it's a trench system. You don't need a mound. So it's what we know. Remember that word they got that professional wheel on their septic system? Professionals? You are professional realtors. We need to know. At least, I can't tell them what to do. All, I, my job, all our jobs are is to give them their options. They make an informed decision. And if anything I taught you today has any value, appreciate your feedback, you can send me an email. It was either valuable or it wasn't. So I want to thank you all for coming over here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank Thanks you. Man. And again, if you have any questions, um, you're working on a deal, don't hesitate to text me, call me, or whatever. Will this be available online to your class? Thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you. On some YouTube. Appreciate it. Might be enough. Is there any little perfect awesome. Uh Maybe would we sell her that would maybe be it's just so, kind of starting to move. Well, it's kind of.